Okay, you guys are gonna get splashed. They're coming back with that fish. We started looking at Lake Sturgeon and Lake Champlain back in 1998. The fish had been um, listed as an endangered species since the early 1970s, and we really didn't know much about the species. And there's one. We studied Lake Sturgeon for about 10 years, and then recently we've been writing a restoration plan for the species, and we started to think about what research do we need to do so that we could determine whether or not sturgeon numbers were increasing or decreasing. And when we sample in a river for adults like we were doing, we we're so dependent on springtime flow conditions to be successful at capturing fish that you can never sample consistently from year to year. The sturgeon are caught in large gill nets placed in Lake Champlain tributary rivers during the spring spawning run. They are then brought to shore so biologists can carefully measure, weigh, and tag every sturgeon captured. Joel, length is uh, 1385 total length. The goal is to determine the health of the sturgeon in Lake Champlain and over time develop population estimates of this rare and unique fish. It is the largest fish found in the state of Vermont and also the longest living fish. Lake sturgeon can live up to 150 years old. They can reach lengths of six and seven uh, feet long. They can weigh up to 200 pounds. Lake sturgeon is really a prehistoric fish. It has all these bony scoots along its back and its side. Um, once they get older, they get kind of covered with skin, but when they're young fish, they're really sharp. And those bony scoots, these pieces of cartilage, um, really protect uh, the fish from other predators. You know, it, it's a bottom feeder. It has these barbels that hang down in front of its mouth here. It has a large um, suction mouth right here. You see the suction mouth come out. And so it uses these barbels to find food in the sediments and then it just goes along the bottom and it sucks up that, those uh, you know, things that are buried in the sand. Lake Sturgeon and Lake Champlain have not been able to recover over the last you know, 30 or 40 years, even though they're fully protected. And we believe that the cause of that is that the adult mortality is still high. And it's not poaching, it's not anglers going out fishing for them, it's not water quality. I think that the major factor affecting adult mortality has been sea lamprey predation. The good news is lamprey wounding rates on sturgeon captured in the lower Winooski and Lamoille rivers are now much lower than they were 15 years ago thanks to the ongoing sea lamprey control program on Lake Champlain. Research in the Great Lakes has shown that a single lamprey wound is fatal to about half of the sub-adult sturgeon attacked by lampreys, which includes sturgeons that are up to 35 inches long. You know, these fish need to survive for 25 years before they can spawn. So if you have extra mortality on them over that whole 25 years before they get a chance to spawn, any sort of additional mortality beyond that is a problem. And this year, our lamprey wounds had dropped from around 120 to 130 per 100 fish down to 15 to 18 this year. So we saw a dramatic improvement in the wounds out there, but it's still early. You know, these fish that we saw this year were 30 to 40 pounds. We weren't seeing the six foot, seven foot sturgeon that weigh 150 pounds. And you've got to keep that mortality low if you expect those big fish to show up again. One of the highest priorities of the restoration plan is to find locations in the lake where sturgeon concentrate the feed. This would provide a much more consistent and stable environment for sampling these fish than in tributary rivers during the spring spawning run when high water levels and drifting debris often make netting impossible. To do this, the fish have to be tracked back to the lake. He's got a real bony plate, and he's got scoots right here, and there's this soft tissue here where we try to put the pit tag. We tag every fish we catch with what's called a pit tag that just has an identification number on so we can identify that particular fish. But we also put acoustic radio tags in 10 fish. The lipstick sized acoustic tags need to be surgically implanted into the fish's belly, and it's no easy task getting through the tough, leathery skin of a sturgeon and then suturing up the incision. In 2015, 10 of the sturgeon captured in the Winooski River received acoustic tags. Those acoustic tags send out a ping every one to three minutes, and they can be heard about a 
half a mile to a mile away from where that fish is. Once the tag is implanted, the fish is released. For the next 10 years, biologists will be able to monitor its movements in the lake using receivers that pick up each tag's unique ping. What we're doing right now is we're going out in an area of the lake where we've found sturgeon all summer, and we're going to put out three stationary receivers so that if the winter conditions are so bad that we can't get out here and look for fish, those stationary receivers will be recording every time a sturgeon goes by them. Thanks to several stationary receivers, along with data collected from a portable receiver, the location of these fish can be recorded year-round when in range. And after only a few months, the information collected has already been very helpful. When we first started this project, the first day we came out to look in the lake, we picked up two fish really fast. And I was surprised, and I said then, that I thought we would spend the whole summer out here looking at Lake Champlain and might find one or two fish. Because when you think about it, this is a massive lake. They have a long way to go. These are big fish that can migrate long distances. And I thought they'd go maybe 100 miles, 60 miles from here. And we've been pretty surprised that we've been able to find them and find them consistently. More than three months after being tagged in the Winooski River, all 10 sturgeon have remained in the lake between Colchester Point and Apple Tree Point. Information like this might lead to a more reliable way to capture sturgeon in the future. While sturgeon are endangered in Vermont and several other states, there are a few places that support a healthy fishery. They are, you know, still fish for commercially in parts of the St. Lawrence. There are some really popular recreational fisheries out there in the Midwest, and that's really our goal here on Lake Champlain. If we can recover the numbers of lake sturgeon here to the point where we are comfortable they can sustain a small adult fishery, then, you know, that's what we'd like to achieve. While a recreational sturgeon fishery in Vermont is still many years away, Thanks to the ongoing sea lamprey control program and habitat improvements, Fish and Wildlife's recovery plan seems to be making some progress. So this one was about uh, 53, 54 inches long. This one weighed 31 pounds. This isn't a real big lake sturgeon. We've caught them that weighed 60 to 70 pounds. I don't know of like a fisheries biologist that wouldn't like the opportunity to work with a fish that might be six and seven feet long and weigh 150 pounds. That has been here for millions of years and has declined and now we have a chance to restore that. You know, to think I'm working with a fish that can live 150 years, maybe 130 after I handle it, that's pretty unusual. So it's great to have the opportunity to work with them and hopefully that what we're doing, what we're learning will help you know, restore their population so that other people can see them here in Vermont and someday someone will get a chance to fish for them.